Well, the Montreal Alouettes have elected to receive. The Edmonton Eskimos will kick off. And it will be Dave Cutler performing that chore on behalf of the Eskimos. Weather conditions this morning looked as though they might just be ideal, as it appeared as though it was going to clear. Then about an hour ago, the wind and rain moved in. This game is underway as Cutler kicks off. The ball is taken by Florio at the 10. He gets up to the 23, still going. He fumbles the football, and it's recovered by the Alouettes as Dickie Harris was there to pounce on it. A penalty flag goes down. I'm quite sure that will be an offside lateral charged against the Alouettes. And that means the ball will be brought back to the point it was fumbled by Rudy Florio. A 56-yard kickoff and a 21-yard return. The referee is Don Barker. And let's set those Montreal Alouettes for you offensively as they prepare for their first series of plays. Wayne Conrad is the center. Braggins and George are the guards. Randall and Watron are the tackles. Dallariva and Skippyman are the ends. Johnny Rogers is running along with Larry Shearer, Steve Farragelli, Larry Smith behind quarterback. Jimmy Jones. There was some speculation as to who would be the starting quarterback. It is Jimmy Jones who suffered that left shoulder separation last week against Ottawa. Scherer on the first carry finds a little room and gets a gain of about seven. As he crosses the 35 and is upset there by Dan McDonough. Scherer was on the injured list for most of the season. He went through training camp with the Alouettes. He was reactivated three games ago and has certainly been an integral part of that Montreal attack since rejoining the active roster. A gain of seven, it's second and three. Rogers comes wide left. Larry Highbaugh is out there with him. Jones gives straight ahead. Baragelli's got a hole as he crosses the 45 and the game's first, first down, striking to the 47 with Dick Dupuy making the tackle. Baragelli came to the Alouettes via Washington and New Orleans, and he led the East in rushing this year with 1,134 yards. Well, this is a type of play that the Alouettes feel that they can run against the Eskimos, just straight ahead blocking. There's really no complications about it. It's particularly important right now. The wind is against them, and they need to maintain possession of this football. This time, Rodgers goes wide to the left. And again, Highball swings over there with him. This is going to be a matchup to witness most of the afternoon. No room inside. The right defensive half of that Edmonton team converged on the ball carrier. Watch McDonald here, the middle linebacker of the Edmonton Eskimos, does an excellent job against the offensive center, Conrad, of the Alouettes. That's one position that the... Alouettes felt that they could hurt the Eskimos middle linebacker because McDonald's only had an opportunity to play about five or six ball games at that position. He did an excellent job on that play. It's second and nine. Pickup of just one. And for the first time, Jones is going to the air. He swings it out to Caragelli. And you see the difficulties these backs are going to have with that turf. Dick Dupuy came up to make the stop on Caragelli, who went down as he accepted the throw from quarterback Jones. They brought in a new piece of equipment to this artificial turf. It's called a game saver. It's a vacuum type operation that sprays the water to the outer extremities of the field where it runs off through the drains. However, with the rain falling during the course of the game, the accumulation of water is continuing to build. There are four backs to receive this third down punt from Sunny Way. I think that's a smart play by head coach Ray Yock of the uh, Edmonton Eskimos because that ball is very slippery out there. Bad snap from center. But Wade does get the kickoff. Stu Lang is down at the 33, upset there by Barry Randall. Don, let's just see how prophetic we are in terms of uh, our discussions immediately prior to this game. We said that we thought that they'd try and do something to take away that rush by the big front four. Let's look for possibly a screen on this play. The Eskimos will scrimmage first and 10 from their own 33. That was a 33 yard kick into the wind by Sonny Wade with a six yard run back. George McGowan goes wide to the right. Gary Lefebvre comes left. There's the screen to George McGowan. You called it Frank and McGowan is up to the 41. Well we had an opportunity to talk to Tom Wilkinson, the Edmonton quarterback, during the year he has drawn people offside. And we asked Tom to explain just what happens at the line of scrimmage. 
Well, basically, what I do to uh, try and draw them off sides is I'll change my cadence, uh, go on, say, one number three or four times uh, the same count, and then the next time up, I'll change it to a following count. For instance, if I go on one, then after about four or five plays, I'll go on two. And when I do that, then I put more emphasis on one. I raise my voice. I make it sound like we're going to go on one, and then the ball is snapped on two. On that occasion... They could have used it offside because Calvin Harrell was stopped what appears to be short of a first down. Let's see just how close it is as referee Barker calls for a measurement. Don, that was very interesting to listen to Wilkie there. I think he's getting honest in his old age. I never <laughs> heard him admit that he was trying to draw people offside. And now early in the ball game, a gambling situation for the Eskimos. They are just short of a first down. And with Wilkinson, Harrell, Bell, and the entire offensive unit remaining in, the Eskimos are going to try to move those yardsticks. That really has to be a surprise, Don. This early in the ball game, only four minutes gone in the first quarter to, to make a gamble like this. It really shows the confidence that Wilkie and the head coach Ray Yock have having that offensive line. Now in wide right, Lefebvre comes to the left. That Alouette defensive unit is stacked in there. Wilkinson keeps. It's going to be close. It could be extremely close and undoubtedly will require another measurement to determine just how far Wilkinson advanced. Well, I think Raymond's going to have a few more gray hairs before this measurement is made. No, a first down for the Eskimos. Their gamble pays off. So both teams have succeeded in gaining a first down in this first quarter with 10.55 remaining. On that third down gamble, it's now first and ten for the Eskimos. They're scrimmaging from the 44. Again, they're running the same type of formation with McGowan right and the fave left. You saw the movement at the line of scrimmage. The penalty flags go down, and so does Roy Bell, the ball carrier. Glenn Weir, I think, Don jumped offside the right tackle, number 64 of the Alouettes. Take a look at it. I think you can pick him up here. Number 64. Jumps just prior to the ball being snapped. Roy Bell had picked up about six yards, but I think the Eskimos will take the penalty and go with first and five. Well, Tom Wilkinson explained just what happens at that line of scrimmage. And, of course, the defensive coaches of opposing teams work in their people to concentrate on the ball and not the cadence of the quarterback. But Wilkinson has been tremendously successful, Frank, over the course of the season with drawing people offside. That's one of the things the Alouettes have been practicing all week, though. They've had one coach working with those four defensive linemen all, all week, an hour a day, just working against that cadence call. The first down will be repeated. First and five, and it's Roy Bell stopped and thrown back. The second leading rusher in the West. His progress was arrested by Joe Critchlow. I think there's a couple of reasons the Eskimos have not put the ball in the air yet. Of course, one of the problems has been the uh, the weather, of course, and they want to keep control of that football. There's no score between Montreal and Edmonton, and the 1974 Grey Cup will continue in a moment. As the Eskimos prepare to scrimmage second and ten, they've made a substitution offensively. Larry Highbaugh is in in place of Don Warrington. That would indicate, Frank, that this almost certainly is a passing situation for Edmonton. Well, they're flanking him out on the right side with Tyrone Walls. Both of them excellent receivers and high ball coaches at great speed. Wilkinson completes to George McGowan. And McGowan to the 40. The game's biggest gain so far. Wally Buono is there to make the stop. You know, they talk so much about McGowan being a great receiver because he concentrates on the football, and that certainly is one of the key reasons. But he just makes an excellent move after he receives his football. Watch him. Ward Smith had him measured for the tackle, but he picks it up, up another seven yards in total, a 22-yard gain. George McGowan, the outstanding player in the Canadian Football League a year ago, an honor he relinquished to quarterback Tom Wilkinson this year. McGowan missed most of the season with a hamstring injury. Roy Bell gets to the 35, an advance of five more. Carl Cornell, the middle linebacker, was in to make the tackle. Cornell, number 72, playing that middle linebacking position. Last year, he worked as a defensive end. 
However, he was an All-American at West Virginia for two years at the middle linebacking spot. And many people feel that he has been the outstanding middle linebacker in the country in this 74 season. 530 remaining in quarter one. Penalty flags go down as Calvin Harrell is stopped short of a first down, but again it appeared as though it may have been an offside. I don't think there was much question about that, Don. The right linebacker, Widger, number 34, was in the off Edmonton offensive backfield. Down at the Edmonton bench, an injured Eskimo player with dearly love to be out there, right, Ernie? That's right, Don. Uh, Bain Norrie, uh, one of the players, did not make the lineup. He's helping out coaching tonight. And Bain, this, the weather, the wa the, the water is going to affect the play. I, I'm afraid that maybe one player may drop the ball at a key time. Are you worried about that, too? Well, it's obvious to everyone. I think that the weather is going to be a big yeah. factor here, Ernie. And we've already seen Farragelli drop the ball. Right. And I, we would have to hope that they're not as used to the adverse conditions <laughs> as we are. And hold on to that ball. All right. Okay, thanks, Bain. Thank you. Well, Ernie, when Bain talked about adverse conditions, they couldn't have been much worse a week ago at the Autostad when Montreal won the Eastern title against the Ottawa Rough Riders. That quick out pattern to Gary Lefebvre, and he's forced out of bounds. That at the 27-yard line. Lefebvre, a valuable receiver for the Eskimos during the course of the season. Another fill very much an integral part of that Edmonton, Edmonton offensive line is Charlie Turner, number 60. Watch the job he does on Joe Critchlow. Back it up for just a moment, please. You'll see Joe Critchlow here, number 66. He's the second most feared pass rusher, and Charlie Turner just does an excellent job allowing Wilkinson to get to the outside. Pickup of six, it's second and four. Pitch to Roy Bell. Calvin Harrell leading the way. He gets to about the 21. Gordon Judges was there to make the tackle. It's about a yard short of the first down, and again, I would guess that the Eskimos will gamble. They took a shot at third and less than a yard when they were in their own end of the field. There's no reason to change the strategy now that they're in Montreal territory. Down goes wide to the right. The trade comes left. Calvin Harrell hurdles the line, and as he crosses the 20, that should be a first down. Well, the Eskimo offensive line does a good job of getting off the football here, and they keep the Alouettes down, the defensive line down, and Harrell goes up and over for a very important first down. The Eskimos are now at the 19-yard line with four minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 19. The Eskimos, last year, losers to the Ottawa Rough Riders. 22 to 18. Again, he's down to about the 15. Joe Critchlow, number 66, was in on the stop. Harrell has had problems over his first three seasons with the Eskimos. As a matter of fact, during his first two years, he saw only limited action because of injuries. This year, he has not been completely healthy all season, but he hasn't missed any games. Larry Heibach goes back into the ball game for the Eskimos on this second down play. Don Warrington comes out. It's second and seven with now 4.06 still quarter time. Wilkinson throwing incomplete. It was intended. It's a late hit on Wilkie, though. For Gary Lefebvre, and there is a penalty flag. Glenn Weir, 64, and Junior IU, number 77. With the two people involved with Tom Wilkinson, it's going to be roughing the passer. Wilkie just makes a short roll to the left side looking for Lefebvre on a crossing pattern. Actually, Lefebvre is wide open. Wilkie missed him, but nevertheless, it will be a first down for the Eskimos. Unnecessary roughness is charged against Junior Ayo, and that will give the Eskimos a first down. The ball is at the eight yard line. It will be first and goal from that point. Highbar goes to the Edmonton bench. Warrington comes in. 
3.53, the time remaining in quarter one. No score in the ball game, but the Eskimos definitely threatening. Fans from all parts of Canada here at Empire Stadium in Vancouver. They have their favorites, and they are certainly vocal. Play! Calvin Harrell, touchdown! Well, Harrell actually fumbled the, the football. Harrell fumbled the ball, but he was able to recover. You see in number 19, Calvin Harrell coming out of that backfield, just swinging out into the flat. There was no question where Wilkie was looking. He was going to Harrell all the way. Dropped the ball on the three-yard line, but managed to recover it, get into the first major of this ball game. One of the patterns that Edmonton was so successful with in the final game against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, getting those backs out into the flat. Perhaps Cal has had a little experience playing water polo. That ball bounced around in the water on the Empire Stadium turf. He recovered, and Dave Cutler adds the extra point, and the Eskimos move in front by a score of 7 to nothing. There may be some bad news here at the Edmonton bench right now. Don, again, to start, there may be some, well, problem here in the Edmonton bench. Right now, Bruce Lemmerman is warming up. Apparently, Tom Wilkinson hurt his shoulder slightly on that last series of play. He's trying to work it out. He's walking along in front of me now, and uh, we don't know if he'll get back in the game. Well, that would be quite a blow for the Eskimos. You'll recall Wilkinson was also hurt in last year's Grey Cup game. Jones under pressure. He throws complete. Skip Beeman was on the sideline to accept that toss from quarterback Jimmy Jones in front of Morris Noble. Jones did a good job of evading some of those Edmonton defensive people who were charging in on him, particularly Bruce Smith and Dave Fennell. Watch Ron Este, the defensive end of the Eskimos. He's covering Farragelli coming out of the backfield, but because of Jones' scrambling ability, he has to finally put the pressure on him. John, you'll also notice in fans across the country, when you see the Alouettes go in a lot of motion in that backfield, they generally like to throw. First down. Incomplete. Intended for Rodgers. A penalty flag goes down, and I believe Larry Highbaugh is being charged with interference. Now we're going to have to take another look at that. I think Ken Nielsen, our ISO director, has it on isolation camera because I don't think Larry Highbaugh hit Johnny Rogers prior to that ball getting there. I don't know. That's an awfully, awfully close call. However, the officials are ruling interference against the Edmonton Eskimos, and that's an automatic first down for Montreal. The ball is at the 30. 1.56 is the time now remaining in the first quarter. Edmonton leads Montreal 7 to nothing on that touchdown by Calvin Harrell. Galley is stopped after a gain of about one. Rob McLaren from his corner linebacking position came in on Farragelli. Farragelli actually started as a linebacker with the Alouettes. This year he led the Eastern Conference in rushing. He's probably the biggest running back in the CFL at six foot two, 230 pounds. and nine Jones to throw looking into the end zone to Rogers and it's knocked away a great move by Larry Highball and he obviously felt that he should have had the interception and I think that one would be worth looking at again well, I feel he should have had the interception too he did a great job on pass coverage once again on isolated camera Johnny Rogers just runs a post pattern Highball with that great speed stays right with him but he certainly should have caught that football Larry Hyba, according to Johnny Rogers, is one of the toughest defensive backs in the CFL, and we've seen evidence of it on the two pass attempts that they've aimed in Rogers' direction this afternoon. Don Sweet comes into the game. He will attempt a field goal from the 37. Jimmy Jones will hold. Larry Hyba is the lone man back. A bad snap. 
Jones doesn't get an opportunity to pin the ball as Morris Noble was in on top of him, and the score holds with 32 seconds remaining at Edmonton 7 and Montreal nothing. Well, that certainly evens up the breaks in the last couple of minutes. That questionable call on pass interference, Larry Highball gets Rogers. Edmonton gets their break right back. A bad snap from center. He pointed the accusing finger at Jimmy Jones as having difficulty with that snap, actually. And Wayne Conrad centering the ball. It took a bounce before it ever got to Roger or to uh, Jones. And he had no opportunity. That was, see, I'm sorry, Don. It was an important drive for the Alouettes, though, because they did keep the ball quite a while. There's only 19 seconds remaining for the Edmonton Eskimos to work with the win. And Bruce Limmerman's in the ball game. We saw Wilkinson walking at the bench. And Roy Bell gets to the line of scrimmage and no further. Chuck Zapek made the stop at the line of scrimmage. We have time for one more play in this first quarter. Larry Highbar goes in in place of Don Warrington. Bruce Lemmerman in at quarterback with Tom Wilkinson on the bench. As Ernie pointed out, He's favoring that shoulder. The game is to Roy Bell. And Bell is caught as he tried to turn the corner by Mike Widger. He picked up perhaps one yard, but that should be the final play of the first quarter. There's the gun. The score is Edmonton 7, Montreal nothing in the 1974 Grey Cup. We'll continue in just. From coast to coast, fans have traveled to Vancouver to watch this 1974 Grey Cup game in person. Wherever you're viewing at home on this Sunday afternoon, we hope you're enjoying the telecast of Grey Cup 74. Preparing to start the second quarter, Gary LaFave stands at his own 25 for this third down kick. Kicking into the wind, he got away a pretty good boot. It's taken by Eamon back at the 30. Roger Scales and Tyrone Walls are in pursuit, and they bring him down at the 33. That was a five-yard run back by Eamon after a 41-yard kick. And in that first quarter, not much difference in time of possession, with Montreal actually holding a slight edge of 16 seconds. However, Edmonton leads in the important statistic, 7-0 on the scoreboard. Jones still in at quarterback for the Alouettes. As we mentioned at the start, there was some conjecture over the past few days as to whether it would be Jones or Sonny Way. Chair of the ball carrier. Hit initially by Ron Este and then brought down with assistance from Leroy Jones. Just a great job by Ron Este here, number 55. He's working against Watron, 52 of the Alouettes. But he keeps that outside leverage and doesn't allow the offensive tackle Watron to pin him to the inside. Good pursuit by the rest of the Eskimos limited the game to two yards. Este bears the nickname Swamp Dog and it's certainly most appropriate in the conditions they're playing in here at Empire Stadium with an accumulation of water building on the artificial turf. Rose Smith goes to the bench Ron Forwick in defensively at that tackle spot for Edmonton. It is second and seven for Montreal. The ball is at the 37. <laughs> Penalty flag is down. I think the Alouettes are going to be charged with an offside. The pass intended for Dallareva. It's incomplete. John Beaton almost had an interception. We talked about the Alouettes using that motion on their passing game, and sure, number 32 goes in motion, and he's the one I think it's called for is called for encroachment. Watch him coming out of the backfield. You can see him right there offside by a good yard before that ball is snapped. The Eskimos declined the penalty as the pass went incomplete, and the Alouettes are forced into a punting situation again with Dick Dupuy, Dave Campbell, and John Beaton, just three back this time to receive the kick. 13 minutes and 21 seconds remain for halftime. The most interesting halftime show is upcoming. Another bad snap. Sonny Wade has to hurry it. He gets away a pretty good boot just the same. And it bounces out of bounds right at the 35-yard line. You know, Frank, just prior to the game, we had a rather interesting telegram sent to us. It says, 
The entire ship's company of HMCS Huron wish the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes and all football fans a great day of football. This comes from the warship Huron flagship of the NATO Standing Naval Force in the Atlantic. I imagine they got just about as much water there as we got here. <laughs> Bruce Lemmerman is still at the controls of the Eskimos, replacing the injured Tom Wilkinson. Ball is bubbled, and I think Roy Bell, very fortunate to recover. Well, it's unfortunate that weather conditions might just dictate the outcome of this game. There have been numerous fumbles already. It's almost exactly the same kind of play Larry Shearer of the Alouettes fumbled on. Fumbles have been a pretty consistent part of this ball game so far, including the one score the Eskimos have put on the board. Calvin Harrell fumbled the ball at the two or three yard line after receiving a pass from Tom Wilkinson, but managed to recover it and go in to the end zone. And second and 13 as Highbar replaces Warrington again as Highbar gets double duty. The pass intended for Highbar was deflected right at the line of scrimmage. I think Chuck Zapak was the man who got a hand on that ball. Lemmerman, the backup man, has gone in for the Eskimos. Perhaps Sonny Wade, number 14, will be replacing Jimmy Jones for the Montreal Alouettes the next time they get the ball. Jones came into the ball game injured. Wilkinson injured his shoulder in that first quarter. It may have been on that late hit from Junior Ayu. 11.53 remains till halftime. Florio and Damon, the punt return pair for Montreal, back to receive the kick by Gary LeFay. Hand over and loop. Taken by Florio. Florio has nowhere to go. He's downed immediately. Roger Scales led the downfield tacklers. That was a 27-yard kick. No opportunity for a run back. Sonny Wade has gone in at quarterback for the Alouettes. So both teams are going with what might be termed second string man at the most important position. I'm going to argue with you about that. What do you mean most important position? I know you're going tackle. to refer to the offensive tackles or the guards, Frank, but... We've got more quarterbacks up in the booth than we have offensive tackles. Larry Smith has a first down as he crosses the 45 into Edmonton's 43, tackled by Dan McDonough. Watch Rob McLaren, number 44, the outside linebacker of the Eskimos. He's trying to cover the pass receiver here and gets confused with the official. If you can pick it up right there, the official makes a great block on McLaren, allows it the ball carrier to move down to the 44 yard line and a big first down for the Alouettes. You may recall that in the 28 28 tie it was Sonny Wade who did all the damage to the Eskimos in the final three minutes replacing Jimmy Jones and racking up two touchdowns to create the deadlock. Sideline pattern intended for Rogers incomplete. He was being defended by Larry Hybaugh. That ball just seemed to slip through Rogers fingers. Well, Rogers talked about before the game how much room Larry Hybaugh gives an outside receiver, particularly one with the great speed Rodgers has, and he's playing, up, playing him about 10 yards away there. He comes up, makes a good shot on Rodgers, but he should have caught the football. We have 10 minutes and 28 seconds still to play in this first half. It's 7 nothing. Edmonton leading Montreal. The Alouettes had a field goal attempt nullified by a bad snap. They are now threatening again. Second down from Edmonton's 44. Right at the line of scrimmage, Larry Smith was hit by Leroy Jones. Dave Fennell also had a hand in that tackle. We have a timeout. The score is Edmonton 7, Montreal nothing, and the 1974 Grey Cup will continue in just a moment. Ron Forwick has gone into the game in place of Ron Este, who was shaken up on that last play. It's a third down kicking situation. Sonny Wade stands at his own 30. He gets away a good one. It's taken by Beaton at the 20. Beaton is down at the 27 by Tony Proudfoot. 
Don, it's very hard to measure the loss of, of Tom Wilkinson in any accurate terms verbally, but since he's been out of this ballgame, the Eskimos have not managed the first down. Bruce Lemmerman, as we look down at that Eskimo huddle, is still in at quarterback with seven minutes remaining in the first half. The rain continues to fall at Empire Stadium. It began about an hour before kickoff. Roy Bell is dropped for a loss. The ball squirts loose, and the Alouettes have recovered. Phil Price was there to scoop it up. Kyle Cornell, I believe, was the man who made contact with Roy Bell, forcing that ball loose. Well, this is the third time that the Eskimos have fumbled. Cornell is number 72, and Junior I, number 77, put the big hit on Roy Bell. Price picks the ball up and moves it down to the eight-yard line, the first gritty big break for the Alouettes in this ballgame. Now let's see if the Alouettes can take advantage. First and goal situation from the eight. Steve Farragalli is the lone setback. Wade under pressure, dropped for a loss, back to the 17. Watch Bruce Smith, number 61 here. He's considered the quickest lineman on the Edmonton Eskimos defensive football club. He's working against Ed George, 65, the outstanding offensive lineman in the country this year. But Smith beats him cleanly there and puts the pressure on Sonny Wade. It's now second and 18 as the ball is positioned at the 18. Wade looking into the end zone. Too far intended for Peter Dallareva. However, a penalty flag is down. Dallareva certainly put a good move on Farlinger there and was open. The ball was overthrown. Again, Larry Highbaugh is charged with pass interference. That infraction took place in the vicinity of the five-yard line. Take a look at first at the pattern run by Della Riva against Farlinger. He was open. Now the holding call. Good call by the official. High ball. Trying to stay with Rogers. That's an automatic first down for the Alouettes. The ball is now at the five yard line. It's first and goal from that point. Flags again. Scherer behind Farragalli looking for the end zone. He finds it. Touchdown for the Alouettes. Edmonton gets caught in a safety blitz here. Watch Beaton, number 71. He's their safety and he comes in on a blitz. Dave Braggins picks him up and makes a great block on him, opening the outside. He would normally be putting pressure from the outside, being a defensive safety. They got caught in that same situation against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and it cost them six points trying to use that safety blitz. With the touchdown by Scherer. The offside infraction against the Eskimos naturally is the climb. We now have a tie game. Edmonton 7, Montreal 7. The Alouettes with the opportunity here to move in front for the first time this afternoon on the convert attempt by Don Sweet. Jimmy Jones will hold. Wayne Conrad, who has had some difficulty on those long snaps, gets the ball back accurately this time. And likewise for Don Sweet, who puts it through and puts Montreal in front 8-7. A bevy of beauties at Empire Stadium, and the young lady wearing the Miss Alouette banner has certainly had the most cheer about so far in this game. The last night, Miss Edmonton Eskimo was named Miss Grey Cup. And Campbell steps out of bounds. He's forced out by Tony Proudfoot. There's a penalty flag. A 47 yard punt and a seven yard run back. Mm -hmm. 
76 Chuck Zabak is charged with hitting Campbell after he went out of bounds. There it is. Referee Don Barker illustrates the roughing infraction against Montreal. That gives Edmonton a first down at the 37. With that water continuing to build up in the surf of Empire, uh, turf of Empire Stadium, it almost is like surf. The centers are having a continuing difficult time of throwing that ball back on field goal or punting situations, and the ball carriers are having equally as difficult time and hanging on to it. Just a little surprised, Don, that the Eskimos are not throwing on first down. You can see some work being done on the, the cleats. Ball players are continuing to change to different kind of footwear because of the weather conditions out there. But I'm surprised Edmonton is staying on the ground on that first down. I thought they'd throw more. Complete pass to George McGowan, hit immediately by Chuck Zabak. Excellent catch by McGowan because the ball is actually thrown a bit behind him. Just a little slant in pattern. See George there isolated. He just goes down to the inside. However, Zapek 76 makes the big hit for the Alouettes and will be a third down situation once again for the Eskimos with 216 remaining in the first half. Gloria and Eamon are back to accept Gary LeFave's kick. Taken by Eamon at the 27, and he just dives to the 30. And I'm sure uppermost in the minds of these punt return people is simply hanging on to that ball. The least of their worries is about the yardage they're going to pick up in a run back. Only a three yard return after a 38 yard kick. 155 shows on the scoreboard clock at Empire Stadium till the halftime break. Medical staffs of both teams will undoubtedly press into extra duty at the halftime intermission, particularly on the Edmonton side of the field as they try and get Tom Wilkinson back into the ball game. The long throw intended for Smith is incomplete. Larry Highball was back defending. However, the ball was out of bounds over the head of the intended receiver, Larry Smith. A capacity crowd of 35,000 jammed into Empire Stadium. The officials endeavoring to do just a little extra in keeping the ball dry until the last possible moment. They're changing balls after every play. On the screen to Sure, he gets away from the first man, still spinning, and he is stopped at the 39. It appears to be just short of a first down. Dick Duque came in to upend him with help from Dan McDonough. Conrad does an excellent job on this play. He's the offensive center of the Alouettes. The fellas had a few problems snapping the football, but he gets to the outside and knocks McLaren down. They're both wearing number 44, McLaren being the outside linebacker of the Edmonton Eskimos. Did once again, and Bruce Smith gets a shot at Sonny Wade. This has not been an exciting offensive football game, particularly since the opening moments. The Alouettes, of course, got the big break on the fumble, the eight yard line of the Eskimos, and put it in for their only major score. They lead by one point with one minute and 31 seconds remaining, and a worried Ray Yock. Well, weather conditions have mitigated against accurate passing. They've also caused problems with ball handling. Good kick by Wade. It's taken by Dupuy at the 25. Dupuy is brought down by Glenn Weir. And you get an illustration there of just what the conditions are like as both of those players slide through a sea of water over on the far side of the field. 45 yard punt with a three yard run back and we have a minute and six seconds remaining in the first half. Larry Highball is in the football game for the Eskimos. 
quite possibly they're not going to sit on the ball here and try to get down at least in Dave Cutler's range for a field goal before going in at halftime. If they could accomplish that, I suppose it would certainly give them a psychological lift. Lamberman throwing deep, intended for Highbaugh. He overthrew him. Highbaugh was in a foot race there with Dickey Harris. He couldn't quite catch up with the football. Highbaugh appears to be running an out pattern here, but then turns it up the field. Lamberman just overthrows him. Good coverage, though, by Price, number 18 in the Alouettes. Harris, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mo. 45 seconds remain. It's second and 10. This time, High Bar goes to the left along with Tyrone Walls. McGowan and Lefebvre come out to the right. Lammerman throwing. It's going to be picked off by Dickie Harris. He's caught by Gary Lefebvre at the 30. That ball was simply underthrown, and Dickie Harris, who almost picked one off earlier, stepped in front of Gary Lefebvre and almost got away. You certainly called it, Don. It's a bad throw by quarterback Bruce Lammerman. It's the second time that he's thrown the ball. It appeared to just throw it up for grabs. Eamon had dropped uh, an earlier pass of Bruce Lemmons. It should have been an interception, but the Alouettes have now got great field position. 33 seconds remaining in the first half. So now the Alouettes will endeavor to put some additional points on that scoreboard. Sonny Wade throwing. Johnny Rogers has got it at the 10 for a first down. And 22 seconds remain. Larry Highbaugh made the tackle. Well, we talked about how much room Larry Highbaugh gives Johnny Rogers, and we certainly have a good illustration of it right here. You see McGowan going downfield. Which we shouldn't be because the Montreal Alouettes have the football. <laughs> but we're going to take another look at the proper play now. As Sonny Wade rolls out to the left. High ball, as you can see, is clearly five yards away from him. Back to the live action, and the end zone pass was underthrown. It was intended for Skip Eamon. Peter Dallareva going into the end zone as well may have been part of that pattern. However, he fell in the vicinity of the goal line. Just 11 seconds remain. I would think the Alouettes have time for two plays as the clock will not start until the ball is snapped. Sonny Wade throwing into the end zone. Dallariva incomplete. He was the intended receiver behind John Beaton. Dallareva quite possibly is protesting that Beaton was crowding him just a little. That play consumed five seconds. It's a good shot of Sonny Wade dropping back, trying to hit Dallareva. A good throw just out of the arms of Peter Dallareva. Would have been a major score, but with six seconds remaining, Don, I think the Alouettes will be attempting a field goal on what should be the last play of the first half. Don Sweet will attempt the three-pointer. This will come from the 18. Kick is up. It is good. And with three seconds left, the Alouettes move in front 11-7. Frank, the way the day dawned here in Vancouver, there was great anticipation that it would be a beautiful football afternoon with the temperature just over 50 degrees and the skies clear, but those storms blow in quite quickly. Apparently, there's a gale warning in the area of the Queen Charlotte, and that affects many of the weather systems in the Vancouver area. Well, the rain has virtually stopped now, Don, but I don't think that's going to change a whole lot because the field is so wet, that ball is going to be wet constantly throughout this football game. From the final play of the first half. Run out the clock with Roy Bell running straight ahead. And that is the end of the first half. And the Alouettes go to the dressing room with an 11-7 lead. There you see the statistics of the first half. 
we know one thing that is important, and that is that the Eskimos will try to get Tom Wilkinson back into this football game. They have not had success without him. And now, the big decision that has been made at halftime is that the Montreal Alouettes will defend the right-hand side of your screen and will also accept the football. The decision by the Eskimos was to receive that end at the opening half. The kickoff by Cutler dives down to Dickie Harris. Harris, with good determination, gets out to the 44-yard line. The 31-yard kickoff by Cutler has returned 20 yards. And so offensively, the Alouettes will have good field shape as Dave Campbell was down to make the stop. It's an 11-7 ball game as we begin play here in the third quarter of the 1974 Grey Cup Classic. Sonny Wade will be at quarterback for the Alouettes in relief of Jimmy Jones, who sustained a shoulder separation last week in the Eastern Final, but did manage to play most of the first half. Farragelli. Farragelli drives his way to the Montreal 50-yard line. His pickup will be just slightly more than five, make it second and a short five for the Alouettes. Bruce Smith and Leroy Jones in to make the stop on behalf of the Eskimos. On that last play, Dick Dupuis, I believe, pulled the muscle here. It could be quite a loss to the Edmonton secretary, secondary. This would cause adjustments throughout the game. You know, Pat, there's one fella down there who I feel belongs on this field with all the water, and that's Leroy Jones, number 73. In the offseason, he is a lifeguard down in Northbrook, Virginia, so he's got a survival test out there. Let's just set that Montreal offense for you. 44 is Wayne Conrad at center as we take a look at Peter Dallariva in action. Peter is the key to their running attack, and both Sonny Wade uses Peter Dallariva is about as good as anyone. He will go to Peter against that zone defense out there. And as a matter of fact, it was the block by Dallariva on Dick Dupuis that sends the former Notre Damer to the sidelines. Second and five, Montreal. Conrad is at center. George and Braggins are at tackles. Watron and Randall are the guards. This is Johnny Rogers as he tries to get around the right side. Nowhere to go as Leroy Jones blocked the corner off on him. The Montreal Alouettes are definitely trying to get the ball to Johnny Rogers. He was playing spit it, split end early in the first half. Now they've moved him back to the halfback position. But in that case, the Edmonton defense doing an excellent job of pursuit, closing off that sweep. John Beaton lost his shoe on that particular play, but he expects to be ready for this third down punting situation that confronts Sonny Wade. Dave Campbell, 25, hustles back. And Beaton, of course, has to join him. The loss was three. It is now third and eight. Good, high, twisting spiral by Wade. Campbell at the 14, drops the ball, and then just falls on it. Tony Proudfoot was there to pin him. And the Eskimos will get their hands on the football after that 50-yard punt by Sonny Wade for the first time in this second half. And let's just see who comes out at quarterback it is, Tom Wilkinson. This is going to be a definite advantage for Edmonton. Wilkinson used that offense about as good as anyone in this league. He uses his big backs, his line. They did not move the ball after Tom went out of the game, so all the Edmonton fans are cheering, hoping they'll get some offense offense with Wilkinson in there. Well, he's got a tough defense to go against. That's Judges, Bridgelow, Weir, and Junior IU as the front four. Intended for LaFave, no good. The defensive coverage provided by Dickie Harris. Let's go down to Bill Stevenson. Pat, every member of the Montreal Alouettes changed footwear at halftime. They all have new footwear on. You know what they're saying about the weather? Man, it's beautiful. Well, they probably don't mind it because they lead the ball game 11 to 7. We have just begun play here in the third quarter. The incompletion makes it second down, 10 yards to go. Edmonton, the ball right at their 15-yard line. Under pressure from IU, he's dropped at the one-yard line. His quarterback, Tom Wilkinson. On that last play, you'll see number 77, Junior IU, Coming on the rush, and you'll see the constant pressure he puts on here. Joe Warbeck's trying to block him. Wilson does, Wilkinson does not have time to throw the football, but IU, he's their pass rush. When he was out of there, Montreal did not have one. 
Third down, 24 yards to go as Rudy Florio, 15, Skip Eamon, 16, drop back to receive this punt, which will come from deep inside the Eskimos' end zone. Gary Lefebvre stands about 14 yards deep in the Edmonton zone. Good punt by Lefebvre. Eamon at the 45 of the Eskimos. Dropped as he gets to the 43 by Tyrone Walls, who is down quickly. A 43-yard pressure punt by Gary Lefebvre. Just a two-yard run back, but the Alouettes enjoy excellent field position. 12 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the third quarter of an 11-7 ball game led by the Eastern Conference champion Alouettes. That's what it looks like here at Empire Stadium in Vancouver as the Montreal Alouettes have a first down at the Edmonton 23-yard line. Flags are down. Sonny Wade all the way into the seven-yard line, pulled out of there by Leroy Jones. On that play there, there is a flag, and I believe it's holding against the Alouettes. We'll take a guess, but we'll have to wait for the official's call. And here you'll see Wade go back, but the Edmonton Eskimos come in a full blitz with their linebackers, putting the pressure. Rob McLaren, number 44 there, causes Wade to get out of the pocket and roll outside. But Sonny runs with his football pretty good. Ed George called on the holding penalty. And so the game by Sonny Wade is nullified, and instead of first and touchdown to go, it'll be first and 20. Back at the Edmonton 33-yard line. Fumbles and penalties obviously will play an important part in this 1974 Grey Cup Classic. Nine minutes, 43 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Alouettes lead it 11-7. Defensively, it's Jones, Fennell, Smith, and Este, the front four for the Eskimos, with Potter, McDonough, and McLaren as the three linebackers. On first and 20, Montreal at the Edmonton 33. The screen to Shearer. Couldn't hang on and just as well. Rob McLaren, the middle line, uh, the corner linebacker, was in to smell out that screen. This is just an excellent job by number 44, Rob McLaren of the Eskimos, of reading the screen. They fake, fake the sweep here with Sonny going back, trying to throw the screen pass to Cher, but Rob McLaren is right there, and even if Cher would have caught the ball, McLaren would have made the tackle. It's second down, 20 yards to go. Montreal at the Edmonton 33-yard line. Baragelli is 33, Scherer is 32. And the ordinary superstar who has not really been a factor in this ball game to this point is number 20, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Nebraska, Johnny Rogers. Comes the blitz again, Pat. Dallariva, no first down, but a big gainer. John Beaton, 71, there to make the hit in about the 20-yard line. The talk in Montreal is that when Sonny Wade is at quarterback, he goes to his tight end, Peter Dallariva. In this case, you'll see Dallariva. They have the blitz on, Edmonton does, with all their linebackers. Dallariva just goes down and hooks. Good job of getting the ball to him and a big play for the Montreal Alouettes. The pickup was 14 yards, but it leaves Montreal with a third and six. And that means that Don Sweet and the Alouette field goal unit is on the field. Larry Highbaugh is about 15 yards deep in the Edmonton end zone. Again, Dick Dupuis forced to leave the ball game. And there is an interesting story of a fellow who had a lot of athletic ability while at Notre Dame, but a personality conflict with head coach Eric Parsegian forced him right off the first team. He ended up coming to Canada first with Ottawa and then to start him with the Eskimos. Sweet will try from 27 yards away. It is good. The Montreal Alouettes increase their margin to a converted touchdown. And there's the score. Montreal 14, Edmonton 7. This is Larry Scherer. Scherer is pushed out at the 31-yard line. McLaren, Este, and Campbell all there to knock him out of bounds after a pickup of a couple. 
My old teammate, Rob McClaren, number 44, who played with me in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, is very happy to be with the Eskimos. And that last play, he did an excellent job, again, of stringing the play out and turning, not allowing the play to turn up the field. And one thing, Pat, to be aware of here is number 32, Larry Scher, is their backup quarterback. If Jones and Wade get hurt, Scher can play quarterback. So he may come out later in the game throwing that ball. They did practice it in the, uh, their practices this week. With the injury to Dick Dupuis, the defensive backfield has had to do some juggling at that Eskimo. Gary Lafave is in there now in place of Dave Campbell. The draw to Sherry. He's got the first down. All the way to the 45. The stop made by John Farlinger. This is just an excellent job here of the lineman opening up the big hole for the draw play. You see Ray Rod to number 52 pick up Rob McLaren. You see the big hole open for Larry Sherry. A big gain for the Alouettes. The first down for Montreal gives them possession at the 45-yard line as the clock runs with a minute 50 to play in the third period. The Alouettes enjoy a 14-7 advantage, and they also enjoy the benefit of this wind, which is gusting to 20 miles an hour. Farragut hit immediately as he crossed out to the 48-yard line by John Beaton. You know, a lot of people, football players are writing books, Jim Young with his Dirty 30, but listen to this one by Steve Farragella. He's working on his master's at nutrition, on nutrition at Rutgers University. He's writing a book, Pat, called Psychological Limitations of the Human Being. Can you believe that? I couldn't read it. How would I believe it? I can't understand it either. It's second down and seven, Montreal, on the three-yard pickup by Steve Farragella. Looking for Larry Smith, out of bounds. Dave Campbell, who was back in the ball game, providing the defensive coverage on Larry Smith, which brings in the punt returners for the Eskimos. That means Beaton, Campbell, and Stu Lang drop back. Sonny Wade will handle the putting for the Owls. And on that last play, it was bad, bad Leroy Jones putting the pressure on Sonny Wade. And all Sonny could do that time, Pat, was throw the ball away or they would have had a big loss because Jones had him. We're into the final minute of the third quarter. Sonny Wade stands at his 33-yard line. Campbell lets it bounce and takes it at the 27, dives to the 30. Tony Proudfoot was down to pin him at that point, and that's where the Eskimos will assume command after the 36-yard punt by Sonny Wade and the three-yard return by Dave Campbell, and we've got but 34 seconds left to play in the third quarter. One thing we may watch for here is Tom Wilkson coming out with the short screen pass, and one that was very successful against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders was the screen pass of their big tight end, Tyrone Walls, number 75. And with just a converted touchdown separating these two ball clubs, you begin to wonder if possibly we might have an overtime situation. No good intended for Warrington. Ward Smith providing the defensive coverage. Second and 10, Edmonton, the ball at their 30-yard line. Wally Bono comes into the ball game for the Alouettes, and Joe Critchlow comes out. There's an important point here. Tom Wilson should let this clock run out here because they want to kick with the wind, Pat. If they kick the ball down here, they will be kicking against the wind. So the Alouettes go with the three down lineman and insert the extra linebacker on second down and 10 from their 30. Harrell cannot hang on at the 40. Junior IU and Gordon Judge is providing some defensive rush on behalf of the Alouettes as the gun sounds to end the third quarter. The score is Montreal 14, Edmonton 7, and the 1974 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. We're heading for home, the final quarter of the 1974 Grey Cup game as the Montreal Alouettes with a 14-7 lead will prepare to receive this punt from Gary Lefebvre. The Alouettes may get a little extra pass rush here. The perennial 
Grand National Fool is out on the field. <laughs> There's the time of possession. The Alouettes, as you see, had the ball for eight minutes and 39 seconds with the win. That may not be as important a figure as the time of possession in this fourth period because the Owls would like to feel that they can control the ball in the final 15 minutes. 14 to 7, the Montreal Alouettes enjoy the converted touchdown lead. Looks like we've got the court gesture out there, Pat, doing his flips and cartwheels. Well, I was just going to say that under these conditions, I suppose anything can happen. It's unfortunate that you play an entire year and then come to the biggest game of the season and don't have the ideal climate situation. However, we are set to go now. It'll be third down, 10 yards to go, Edmonton, which means that Gary Lefebvre will be putting to 15, Rudy Florio, and 16, Skip Eamon. Not a good kick. Florio drops the ball and falls on it at the Montreal 43. Roger Scales was down to pin him at that point. But the Alouettes will enjoy good field position after that 39-yard punt with the win. And land the lakes. Maybe we're going to get a break for the final 15 minutes. It appears that the rains have subsided. The Alouettes have first and 10 from their 43-yard line. Sonny Wade at the controls, 14. Ferragelli. Ferragelli spins his way through to the 50-yard line. John Beaton cut the legs out from under him, but not before the big Montreal fullback from Rutgers had picked up close to seven yards. 71, John Beaton is a safety, and John that time was up playing linebacker. He was responsible for tripping number 33, Steve Farragelli, up on the play. The injured Montreal ball player is 44, Wayne Conrad, which brings in the former Hamilton center, Doug Mitchell to play that offensive center position for Montreal. So they'll line up this way. It will be Mitchell at center, Braggins 58, and George 65 at guard, Randall 55, and Watron 52 at tackles. Peter Dallariva 74 is the tight end. As the Montreal training staff work on regular offense at center, Wayne Conrad. And this could really hurt them, Pat. Wayne Conrad also snaps their punts and field goals. And if he is hurt, Wally Bono, I believe, will have to come in and do it, or Doug Mitchell. And they've had trouble with in this category all year long. Wayne Conrad, 5'11", 222 pounds. Looks like he got his bell rung. So, Doug Mitchell comes in to replace him. We have just begun play here in the final 15 minutes of regulation time. The Alouettes 14, the Eskimos 7. Second down, four yards to go, Montreal. Ferragelli, first down. Still going, John Beaton along with help from Dick Dupuis. Finally drop him at the Edmonton 50-yard line. I just want to show you here how the Montreal line is getting off the ball. And number 65, Ed George, opens up this big hole here, allows their big fullback to get up there. But they did get off the line of scrimmage, beating the Edmonton defense on the, off the ball. First down, Montreal. The ball at the Edmonton 50-yard line. Big rush for Rodgers. He's got it. At the 38-yard line, first down, Montreal. That was that was just an excellent job by Sonny Wade. As you see, Johnny Rogers here running an out pattern. And again, Larry Highball giving him a lot of room on the outside. But Wade here sees the safety blitz again by John Beaton and gets rid of the ball quickly to Johnny Rogers. The pickup was 13. First down, Alouettes at the Edmonton 37. Montreal leads it 14 to 7 at this moment. Larry 
Scherer. The stop made by Dave Fennell, Larry Scherer running with power for about five, and let's go to Bill Stevenson. Wayne Conrad, as you explained, got a knock on the head, and he's been given a few smelling salts. The doctor's working on him. An ice pack is being put on the back of the neck, but he is all right except for that, and the word is that he'll be able to come back into the ball game. Hey, Bill, you know Pat and I miss you up here. Well, I'll tell you, it's a little drier where you are than where I am, gentlemen, and I miss you too also. The pickup by Scherer was five yards, and the Alouettes setting out to accomplish what they were able to do in the first period, and that is control the ball against the wind. Smith. Edmonton football at their 36-yard line. Dave Fennell comes up with the ball. The biggest break of the ball game. This is one of the... This is one of the problems that you'll have with a rookie center in there, Doug Mitchell. Doug does not get the ball to Sonny here. He really never gets a hold of it. And if you see, it came right off Sonny's stomach down to the ground. But again, having trouble with the new center. Smith was into the hole, really, before he could get control of the ball. And the Eskimos have it at their 36-yard line. First down with 11 minutes, 45 seconds left to play in regulation time. Roy Bell. Out to the 41, his pickup will be about five. Junior IU made the stop for Montreal. What, what a break. What we're going to see here is 72, Carl Connell, in great range of a middle linebacker. This is what he has to do, cover from tackle to tackle and even outside. He's in on the tackle there on Roy Bell. It reminds you a little bit of Wayne Harris, doesn't it? Bad from tackle to tackle, making, tack making those tackles all over the field. How do you like those for words? Whoa. The pickup by Bell is close enough to five, but we'll say it's second and a long five. Four judges drops Tom Wilkinson back at the 35-yard line. Big play by Canadian Gord judges. What you'll see here is Calvin Harold, number 19 and 14, Roy Bell, not getting their blocks on Gordon Judges, and he's allowed to get through. Big play by Judges, and he was another one, Pat, that did not play against the Eskimos when they tied 28-28. When you remove Gordon Judges, 75, and Junior Ayu, 77, from that Montreal defensive front four, it makes a difference, as we find out here this afternoon. Gary LaFave stands at his 20-yard line on third and 12, Edmonton. Just got it away, but a good one. But Florio has it as 35. Tyrone Walls and Roger Scales there to make the stop for the Eskimos. On the 39-yard punt by Gary LaFave and the five-yard return, the Eskimos will try to pin the Montreal Alouettes inside their own 45-yard line. The specialty teams play an important part in football, and then you'll see Roger Scales, number 51, doing an excellent job coming down on the punt team. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. First down, Montreal, at their 42. Yeah. For Eamon, they roll no catch. Good call by the official. The ball squirted through Eamon's hands. That was an excellent call. He was right there, and the ball, he tried to catch it with his legs, Pat. It's better with his hands that time. 14 to 7 in favor of the Montreal Alouettes over Edmonton, and the 1974 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. This is Frankie Morris of the Eskimo coaching staff, and Frank, uh, the Eskimos have to get the ball back, but their offensive unit's not moving at all. No, we're not, Ernie, uh, for two reasons. One, whether it's not conducive to offensive play out there. Wilkie's trying to get some things going, but you've also got to give full marks to that uh, Alouette defensive line and their linebackers. They're just doing a tremendous job. They're getting penetration. They make it tough to run. Thanks, Frank. There's, there's no doubt about this interference call. As you'll watch Johnny Rogers get hit before the ball is there. Good call by the official. Now from the end zone, you'll see Sonny Wade deliver the ball right on the money, but Gary Lefebvre is a little bit early. I would think that Gary probably figured I'll take the interference call rather than the seven points. 
because when Johnny Rogers catches the football, he has a tendency to go a long way with it. First down, Montreal at the Edmonton 40-yard line. Nine minutes, 50 seconds left in regulation time. Johnny Rogers with the catch, first down inside the Edmonton 25. Larry Highbaugh again on the defensive coverage. Kenny Nielsen is doing one heck of a job down there on the ISO truck. You see Johnny Rogers again on a, just a comeback pattern with Larry Highball. And this time, they're both at the ball. Just a great catch by Rogers. The Montreal offense, all the motion is to the what, right, and then Wade rolls out to the left. He's got Rogers one-on-one -on -one with Larry Highball. And no way that you can criticize Larry Highball because he provided excellent defensive coverage. But it is. First down, Montreal at the Edmonton 24. Farragelli. Maybe to the 20. Dale Potter and Dan McDonough converged on him at that point. The pickup is three, make it second and seven, Montreal. Defensively, 73 is Jones, 65 Fennell, 61 Smith, Este is 55. That's the front four for the Eskimos who know they've got to stop this Montreal attack. For Rodgers, no good. Step for step with him, Larry Highbaugh. And that will bring Don Sweet onto the field with the field goal unit. And Larry Highbaugh and Johnny Rogers are really having an afternoon. And that time, Larry Highbaugh was almost bump and run, step and for step, as Pat said, with Johnny Rogers. Sweet goes in, and this could be an extremely important field goal attempt. 14 to 7 in favor of the Alouettes at this point, with 8 minutes and 15 seconds left to play in regulation time. You can bet the rush will come full force. It is good. 27 yards, the field goal by Don Sweet and the Alouettes lead it by 10. That's the time remaining in regulation time. Montreal with a 10-point lead, prepare to receive this punt from Gary LaFay. Florio lets it bounce and picks it up at the 38 to the 40, and down there by Joe Warbeck. 35 yards, the length of the punt, a three-yard return, and the Alouettes enjoy good field position at their own 40-yard line with six and a half minutes left in the ball game. Well, the pregame story, of course, was that the Montreal defense control the Edmonton offense. The story is told on the scoreboard. Hit immediately just as he crossed over the 40-yard line. One thing you'll see here is number 17, Dick Dupuy, coming up here and blitzing from the safety spot, and he makes the tackle, and there's just too many people, Edmonton people, along the line of scrimmage for the Montreal offensive lineman to pick up. A gain of a half a yard at best. Second and really 10 to go. Montreal up there, 40 and a half. Larry Scherer. Big first down inside the Edmonton 40. Again, this is just an excellent call by the Alouettes, but the Edmonton Eskimos are coming with the blitz again with safety number 71, John Beat. Wade calls the screen to Larry Sherry, and there's no one in the secondary to pick it up. Some great blocks outside by the lineman, and it was a 29-yard gain on that play. Dan McDonough must be wondering what he has to do to get to the ball carrier, because he was actually blocked out by his own defensive tackle, and as a result, Dick Dupuy, who was chopped down by another block, leads the field once again. 
A big first down, Montreal, inside the Edmonton 40-yard line. Five minutes, 25 seconds, and the clock is running. Left in regulation time. The Eskimos were favored by four. They trail by ten. For Rogers, no good. Let's go downstairs to Bill Stevenson. Last year, Dick Shadow was up doing the color on this Grey Cup broadcast. This year, as an official of the Argos, he's watching it. Dick, what do you think's made the difference in the game? Well, Bill, I think the big factor has been Wilkinson. Uh, when he was out of there, they weren't moving the ball, and uh, of course, they lost it last year when Wilkie wasn't in there. And of course, as they say, defenses win football games, and the Alouettes have certainly come up strong in that department. And the weather hasn't hurt them. <laughs> no, it certainly hasn't. <laughs> all right, upstairs, and thank you, Dick. Well, our thanks to Dick Shadow, the greatest of all Toronto Argonauts as the Montreal Alouettes have a second and ten situation confronting them with the ball just inside the Edmonton 40. For Rodgers, he's got it. First down. Johnny Rodgers to the 23-yard line. Edmonton is gambling here. They're trying to get back into this football game. They're blitzing their linebackers and safeties, and this leaves Johnny Rogers one-on-one -on -one with Larry Highball. And I'd hate to be Larry Highball, can you? Because you cannot cover Johnny Rogers one-on-one -on -one in every play. Here you'll see Wade again laying the ball right in the money, but he was under pressure by number 30 Dale Potter, one of their linebackers who was on the blitz. The big first down for Montreal gives them possession at the Edmonton 27. Four minutes, ten seconds left in regulation time. The Alouettes are not playing it conservatively. They're going for everything. Curagelli. No, sir. Great play by John Beaton. Again on the blitz. That's exactly right, Pat. Again, Edmonton had all their linebackers up in tight and one of their safeties blitzing. They're gambling. They're trying to cause the turnover on the field and get back into the ball game. Veragelli didn't quite manage to get back to the line of scrimmage, so it's second and ten and a half to go. And the clock continues to run with three minutes, 35 seconds. The Alouettes 17, the Eskimos 7. Veragelli inside the 20 to about the 18. It will not be enough for a first down. So Don Sweet and the field goal unit come back out onto the field. Dan McDonough, the middle linebacker of the Eskimos, there to make the stop. But the Alouettes, who enjoy a 10-point advantage, will have an opportunity to add three more. And with this kick, Don Sweet could establish an all-time Grey Cup record of field goals. He has three now. Number four would establish the new mark. This will come from 25 yards away, right in the center of the field. It is good. A Grey Cup record for Don Sweet as he ups the Montreal count to 20-7, to and the 1974 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. Second and 10, Edmonton from their 35. The screen to Harold to the 37-yard line. Glenn Weir made the stop. The Eskimos will have to gamble. It'll be third and seven yards to go. Let's wait and see what they decide. Two minutes and 33 seconds left in regulation time. And apparently they're not going to because Tom Wilkinson leaves the ball game. Not really an awful lot to lose by gambling at this point. However, with conditions as they are and the rain again falling, quite conceivably, head coach Ray Yock is praying for a fumble. It's the fake. No good. They gambled and lost. As Wally Bono put pressure on Gary Lefebvre, the Alouettes will take over at the Eskimos 37.
Jerry Lefebvre on this was faking the punt, as you all saw, but it was excellent coverage downfield by Dickie Harris on number 75, and wow, did he get hit on that one, but number 75, Tyrone Walls, was the intended receiver, and Jerry could just not get the ball to him. Two minutes and nine seconds left. The clock is stopped. It will start the moment that the ball is passed from center. 20 to 7, Montreal over Edmonton. First down, Montreal at the Edmonton 37. Farragelli hit instantly. Dave Fidel and Bruce Smith there to hit Farragelli. The moment he got his hands on the ball, the loss will be won. Second down and 11. That will not dismay the Alouettes, of course, because they just are trying to run the clock at this moment. And there you see it running right now at a minute 55. A great performance by the Montreal defensive unit. Some clutch field goal kicking by Don Sweet. Scherer. All the way inside the 30. He'll be close to a first down, but he'll be short likely by a yard. And I wish we could see Larry Scherer's face here. He must have a big smile on because watch this big hole open up here. The Montreal line collapses the Edmonton defense. And look at Steve Farragelli, number 33, doing a great job on number 44, Rob McLaren. They're short by a couple, and that means Don Sweet will try to extend his Grey Cup record of field goals. He has four now. He will try for five. Sweet at this moment has 14 of the 20 Montreal points. And we have had something less than a most pleasant afternoon here because of the weather conditions. Sweet's try will come from 37 yards right on the hash marks. Jimmy Jones couldn't spot the ball down. And as a result, we never did have an opportunity to get that kick away. That was a smart play by Jimmy Jones there. That field goal would have been blocked automatically. He did fumble the ball there, and I think it's Jimmy Jones' left shoulder, Pat, which has been hurt, and he's having trouble catching the ball from the center. We've got a minute and 17 seconds left to play. Bruce Lemmerman is in at quarterback for the Eskimos. Going deep for McGowan. He's got it. Inside the Montreal 25 in behind Dickie Harris. George, One minute exactly. George McGowan here. We talked about Johnny Rogers getting on Larry Highball one and one. Well, here's George McGowan getting on Dickie Harris. And watch this catch. This man has a great ability of coming up with the ball in a crowd. He just beats Dickie Harris there. And you've got to give credit to Bruce Liverman with that wet ball, laying it out here about 45 yards. First down, Edmonton inside the Montreal 25. No good, intended for McGowan again. They've announced the outstanding players in this game. The defensive award goes to Junior IU. The offensive award goes to Sonny Wade, and Don Sweet is selected the Canadian of the game. There was a flag down on that play, so let's just wait and see what it's about. Rough play against Montreal, first down Edmonton. 50 seconds left in regulation time. First down Eskimos at the Montreal 12. Montreal leads 20 to 7. Wilkinson is back in. Into the end zone, picked up. Tony Proudfoot makes the interception in the end zone to snuff out the last opportunity for the Eskimos. 
as the Montreal Alouettes jubilant with a 20 to 7 lead and only 44 seconds left. And maybe this is the way the game should end here. Tom Wilson trying to go deep, but the Montreal defense has just dominated this football game, and they've also been helped, as you can see, by the rain today. It's timing the Edmonton attack. And I wonder if it would be out of place to suggest that not only is the Grey Cup game on the line here today, but maybe, too, the Coach of the Year award. 30 seconds left in the 1974 Classic. Sonny Wade keeps it himself. Gets out to the 13-yard line as the clock stops temporarily at 22 seconds. Don Sweet's field goal kicking and the great performance by the Montreal Alouette defensive unit. As a result, the Alouettes will win the 1974 Canadian Football League Championship. The clock now runs with 15 seconds left in regulation time. Sonny Wade likely to fall on it once again. Keeps it himself. Actually, the ball popped loose, but he was able to fall on it. And that should do it. The gun sounds. The Montreal Alouettes have won the 1974 Grey Cup game. The score, 20 to 7. The Alouettes go crazy, and so do their fans. What a tremendous performance. Not very much offense, but the Alouettes felt that they would be able to control the ball game if their front four and their middle and outside linebackers could do a job, and what a job they've done. As again, the Eskimos come to the well but find lots of water on the field, but not in the Grey Cup. For the second year in a row, the Western Conference champions go down to defeat. The Montreal Alouettes succeed the Ottawa Rough Riders as national champions. Well, the statistics will not be overly impressive offensively, but the important one shows that Montreal has won it 20-7. to 